I will say this until the end of time. PC gaming does not need to be expensive. You can still enjoy tough games like Cyberpunk without spending a ton of money. So behind me, I have a simple $300 gaming computer that can do just that, and it has a wonderful upgrade path. And I'll show you exactly how to build it. But before that, I have a big announcement. I have merch. The hard drive collection combines my few favorite things, cars, computers, and music, into a well-knitted cotton shirt, a dad hat that ironically doesn't fit my hair anymore, and stickers. They're available at oztalkshardware.shop, and you directly support me and you get a fun, cozy item in return. It's only available for a few more weeks, so check it out while you can. Okay, back to the build. So let's get started with the motherboard. I bought a B450M motherboard for $48 on AliExpress. While it's tempting to buy an A320 board from a lesser known brand like Elsa or Maxon, I don't recommend it. They lack BIOS support, memory overclocking, CPU voltage tweaking, and CPU support. We're combining the motherboard with the Ryzen 5 3500X. It's a great budget six core CPU to get you started. It's a little under $60 at AliExpress and beats the cheapest brand new Ryzen processor, the Ryzen 3 4100, while being cheaper. If that's too expensive, don't worry, I recommend the 1500X. It has aged considerably, but it's still 4 cores and 8 threads on a phenomenal platform. $30 on AliExpress. To cool the CPU, I bought a $9 Wraith Stealth from Amazon. It works fine, and if necessary, we can undervolt the CPU for optimal temperatures, but I don't think that'll be necessary. For memory, we're using 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM for $32. It's 3200 MHz with a cast latency of 16. In layman's terms, it's fast enough for 95% of y'all. It's the minimum I recommend nowadays, but you can always get 3600 MHz CL18 memory for a few dollars more. And the last component that fits on the motherboard is the SSD. We have a 512 gig NVMe SSD for $30. It's fast enough and has enough storage to get you started. Now to power the entire system, we have the Thermaltake Smart 500 watt power supply for $40 on Amazon. 
It's my go-to for any ultra budget build. And everything is housed inside the Thermaltake Versa H18. I sound like a Thermaltake stan, I know, but they just make great products at this price range. I can't recommend them enough for the ultra frugal budget gamer. The case is easy to use, has good airflow, looks good, has a power supply basement, and has great cable management. And lastly, if you can afford the extra $20, I recommend more case fans and a fan splitter. Up here is a good starting point. They're $11 for a three pack and a fan splitter for $7 allows us to control the fans through the BIOS. And lastly, we have the video card. It's the trusty RX 580 8GB for about $60 on AliExpress. Now I understand that AMD has shifted the 580 to legacy drivers, but that doesn't change my recommendation because A, there isn't anything to compete with it at this price, and B, the drivers are so mature, I don't think optimizations will make a big difference. I still believe it's a good stepping stone. You can always upgrade in the future. Great, the computer's built, let's see if it works. So grab a monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, and plug everything in. Push the power button, and hopefully all the fans spin up. Yes. 
So if this shows up on screen, then your computer is functional. So press Y on your keyboard to reset the CPU TPM, and then spam the delete key to enter the BIOS. Go to advanced memory frequency settings, and then enable XMP. Go to save and exit, save, and then you're done. We did it. So how is gaming? Well, it's best when wearing the new Ozzox hardware hard drive merch, that's for sure. <clears throat> do as I say, not as I do. But on both processors, it was a great time. New World, Hogwarts Legacy, and Cyberpunk are all CPU intense games, but both processors did really well. We sat in the 50s on medium settings at 1080p in each of them, and we have a little more breathing room to lower settings if necessary. The 1500X struggled a bit in the Cyberpunk benchmark, but it was totally fine while playing the game. Rainbow Six Siege and Valorant were a walk in the park. The CPUs barely broke a sweat. Siege sat in the upper 100s on both processors. In Valorant, the 3500X got to stretch its legs a little more, showing that it's a worthy upgrade from its little brother. 120Hz gaming on the 1500X is achievable, and 240Hz is possible on the 3500X, at least in Valorant. Temperatures were great too, 70 degrees Celsius on the CPUs after a 1 hour gaming session, and 73 on the RX 580. Overall, this computer is a great choice. You have room for great upgrades in the future, but even the performance right now offers a lot. So that's it for this video. All the parts are in the description, along with my merch. Merry Christmas, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the new year.